my husband got a new 3D printer for Christmas this year. And like most of his electronics, I have taken it over, claimed it as my own, and had a ridiculous amount of fun the past few months printing off each and every little thing my kids have asked for. I have learned a lot, I've had so much fun, and I just really want to share it all with you. So I'm going to do things a little different. This is She's Making Something, and I'm going to share with you what we have made on our 3D printer. So for those of you who know or care, the printer that my husband got is the Creality Ender 3 V2. This machine is really small and a little quieter than some others, so it just sits on this little cheap IKEA nightstand inside my husband's office and our regular old 2D printer is underneath it. The printer came with a nice glass printing bed, but recently I was having some issues with the print sticking too hard to the bed, especially prints with like large surface area. So I bought this flexible magnetic bed that just comes off when the prints are done and I can bend it to remove the prints with no trouble and then it just locks back onto the printer. So with this, I've had to level the bed a lot less recently and that has been fantastic. I am currently planning on buying a new fan to go around the hot end, so hopefully it'll be a little quieter and not disturb my husband so much when he's working from his home office but that is the printer we have and what I have been working with. It is a pretty steep learning curve figuring out how all this works. There are lots of settings and things to adjust, but some of the things I've been able to print off in my home for myself and my kids just makes it all worth learning. Almost everything I have printed, I got the files from this amazing website called Thingiverse, where fantastic and wonderful creators upload their models, designs, and files for everyone to access for free. So if it is in this video, then it is on Thingiverse, and I will add all the links in the description. Once the files are downloaded, I used a program called Cura to adjust more settings and save the files in the correct format to the SD card that goes into the printer. So once we got all that figured out and we're ready to start printing things for fun, the first things we printed off were stationary statue-like figurines that my kids asked for, like a three-tailed fox that we found, or my little pony figurine that she colored in with markers. And these were great first prints to see how the layers looked, how strong the material was, how supports worked, etc. And my kids love these little plastic statues and my house would be covered in hundreds of them if I allowed it. But I wanted to see how to print things that moved. And I became obsessed with print in place jointed pieces, meaning it prints all together in one big piece, but because of the way the layers print bottom to top, chain like links can be added to designs to create movement and flow without needing multiple pieces. Uh, the concept just fascinates me. This little octopus guy is the perfect example. In Cura, you can see that he prints all together with his little legs all splayed out stiff, but once he's done printing and you pull him off the bed, his legs are really floppy and wiggly. And my kids love this little octopus so much, we printed him in like four different colors. This articulated technique has been used to design jointed lizards, dragons, of course snakes. We did print a snake and my little boy was in love with it until he threw it at the ground while we were out shopping and it broke into pieces, teaching me a wonderful lesson about the strength and durability of smaller prints, but I digress. I was, like I said, a little obsessed with this print in place idea. And so when I saw this little tank on a Reddit thread, I had to give it a shot. It prints like this with the treads flat on the ground, but then you just flip it to the middle and suddenly the tracks have just enough space between them to turn and the little tank rolls around in such a satisfying way. I can only imagine the amount of time these genius designers must spend getting all of the spacing just so, and I wanna let them know that I see and appreciate what they have created. Another example of a genius print in place design is this little spinning fidget heart. It looks so simple, but again, because things are printed in layers from bottom to top, the spacing from layer to layer can be arranged in just the right way so that the inner heart spins freely, but can't be pulled out. I love how small and easy this print was, but I decided to create a Cura file that would print eight of them at once, and then I let the printer do its thing overnight every night for like a week until I printed off like 50 of them for my girls to pass out to their classmates at school with some chocolates for Valentine's Day. Took some forethought and planning, but printing these hearts was actually cheaper 
than buying some of the Valentine's options available at the store. So real world benefit to having a 3D printer. So once I got the hang of printing a single file, whether it moved or not, I wanted to move on to printing items with multiple pieces. That meant multiple files to download and making sure everything was sized properly to fit together. My husband has been really intrigued recently by the impossible tables, and so we found a file and printed one for his desk. The file was just one half of the table, so it had to be printed twice, and the tiny hexagon designs gave us a little lesson on adding supports and deleting supports from certain areas, which was useful stuff to figure out. And then the two halves are attached by string, and it creates this optical illusion magic table thing that works via physics and tension and a bunch of stuff I can't fully wrap my head around at the moment. But it was strong enough to hold things like a tiny plant or this dragon egg, and it sits on my husband's desk and entertains his brain. Speaking of the dragon egg, this was another that printed in multiple parts, a top and a bottom that twist together. The scales are supposed to line up exactly on the line, I think, but we scaled up the print to a larger size because my daughter wanted it to hold more for tiny dragons. But that was a good lesson on resizing and how it might alter things. It also didn't print perfectly because we accidentally left the retraction test settings in the program when we saved the egg to the SD card. So all these pieces were stringy at the bottom and had huge gaps at the top. So another lesson learned. But my daughter loves this egg and so we moved on and didn't print her a better one. So once I was done printing off all these little plastic toys and things for them, I tried to think of something useful to print and I came up with this card holder for my kids to use while we're playing games. I had one when I was little, it was two pieces of plastic with a spring inside and I was looking all over the internet trying to find one to buy for my kids when something clicked in my brain and goes, ah, we have a 3D printer, I'll just print some. And somebody was nice enough to upload a file like this to Thingiverse and the card holder part printed off all in one piece and then I printed off the stand file as well and it just it holds all their cards so we're, when we're playing games like phase 10 or uno where they have a whole bunch of cards and their little hands can't hold them all this holds the cards for them so they can play these games without getting frustrated and this is one of the first functional useful things I printed that wasn't just a toy for them Speaking of toys though, when we saw this amazing machine on Thingiverse, we knew we had to try it out. It is big, it took our printer something like three days to finish printing everything, but the design of this marble machine just blows my mind. And it is so entertaining. My kids sit and watch the little ball bearings because it's, it's too small for regular marbles, but they watch them go around and around and down and back up and it captures their attention and curiosity. This thing is intricate and mesmerizing and just another example of phenomenal design. And I 100% understand why the creator put his name on the base plate because if I created something like this, I would definitely want credit. But this was a print that needed multiple pieces that interlocked together and the first time I printed something using more than one color. So that was fun and led into another one of my daughter's requests which was a princess crown. And we were excited about this ice tiara design on Thingiverse because it came with this crystal jewel file that is removable. And so we could print it in multiple colors and they could change it out to match their princess outfit. Or if you are my older daughter, then you switch colors depending on which magical power you're currently using. So we printed out two crowns and a handful of these little crystals in a variety of colors to suit their imagination. The crowns are thin and don't require supports. So while it makes them a little delicate and easy for my toddler to break in half. They are also pretty quick to print and thus easily replaceable. So after using those to get more comfortable with printing multiple pieces that I'll have to fit together just so, I found probably my most favorite print of all time, which is this butterfly secret puzzle box. Don't mind that my daughter colored on hers already, but this is an amazing little box based on Korean puzzle boxes with a ton of pieces to print because they all move and slide to reveal the hidden key and then you move other pieces to find the hidden keyhole and my daughters are obsessed. They absolutely love this box. And since the creator was kind enough to include blank front tiles and lid in the download, meaning they don't have the butterfly pattern, I was able to make this star and moon themed version for my other daughter. 
I used a website called Tinkercad, created a free account and started dipping my toes into the world of 3D modeling. Um, but I use it to add simple things like personalized names to my prints or in the case of the puzzle boxes, I add the stars and the pattern border to the lid using all like the pre-made shapes that are included in the website. And then I just save my file when I'm done with it, load it into Cura like all the others. But it's the exact same box, just different colors and patterns. And like I said, my girls are obsessed. And uh, my son has actually figured out how to open it by watching them do it over and over and over. So I'm thinking about printing one for him in red, which is his favorite color. But they do take a while to print because there are so many pieces. But good thing there's a YouTube video on how to assemble all the parts so that it works the way it should. I highly recommend this little box. And this is one of those prints that make me really excited about the possibilities of what can be created with 3D printing. So my son did not get a box yet, and after his sisters got those and the crowns, it was his turn for a fun new toy. And when the end of the ramp for his train set broke, I once again went to Thingiverse to see if some kind soul had created a file of a wooden train ramp and I was overloaded with toy train track models. There are so many. People have uploaded full sets, different brand compatibilities, bridges, turntables. It went on for pages and pages. So after I very quickly found a replacement ramp for his set, I also collected a bunch of other tracks and pieces to expand his precious train set, including splits, connector pieces, end stops, this six-sided turntable, which was super fast to print and only two pieces, and also this adorable little train station. It comes attached to a Brio-compatible section of track and comes in multiple pieces so the colors can be customized and of course is topped with a tiny little clock so all the trains can be on time. It was really easy to print and put together and I'm really really excited i could find items like this on thingiverse it's usable a functional toy it saves my budget so i'm not going out and buying more toys and junk for my kids instead i just print them off at home so in conclusion if you're thinking about getting a 3d printer and you have kids just get one i've had a ton of fun learning about 3d printing and creating so many things and i'm excited to get better and better and see the possibilities of what can be made with this technology this is She's Making Something. Thanks for watching.